So in the previous video, we talked about k-fold cross-validation for model evaluation. Now in this video, we are going to take a look at k-fold cross-validation in Python using scikit-learn utilities. So we will be looking at some code examples and the code notebook I will be using, I just uploaded it to GitHub so you can find it under the following link here. Okay, so um, let's jump right into the code. Let me make that full screen. So first, like always, I'm loading my libraries just to check that I have current versions installed and so forth. I'm loading NumPy and Matplotlib, which are something I usually always use. Um, so the first part we will consider now is a simple demonstration of using k-fold cross-validation in scikit-learn using this k-fold class, which we can import from the model selection submodule. So we're doing or setting here the random seed, so a random generator object, we're just using some number, one, two, three. It's just so if you would run the code, you would get the same results. And we will be using a very simple data set here. Here are some example labels, five labels from class zero and five labels from class one. And I'm also creating a random data set um, with 10 inputs because uh, these are 10 numbers. So I'm just giving it the shape here and four features. Um, note that this is just some random data set. You can use an, an actual data set, for example, the iris data set, but I thought it might be just simpler to use some arbitrary features here. Because the point is not really um, the data set, more like how this k-fold object works. So then I'm uh, initializing this k-fold um, object, I call it cb for cross-validation, so it's initialized from this k-fold class, and I'm setting n splits to five, which, which means that we are doing five-fold cross-validation. Now let me uh, use this dot split method to yeah, look at the behavior of this k-fold um, object. So if I execute that, what happens is I get five uh, results, so a five, five tuples. So this is one tuple containing two arrays. This is another tuple containing two arrays and so forth. And yeah, you can see these are five tuples, so five outputs corresponding to the five rounds to k equals five. And uh, as you might guess, this corresponds to the training fold and this to the validation fold. So what are these numbers here? These numbers are the indices. So if I, uh, so if I would want to get the actual um, labels corresponding to the first fold, um, for example, for the training fold, what I would do is I would uh, use these as, a indi uh, in as indices to select. So I would use these to select, oops, I think I need to do it like this, sorry. Okay, so these would be the training indices corresponding to the first iteration in k-fold cross-validation. And um, the features, the corresponding features would be the following ones. So this would be my first training fold and my first validation fold would then be this, these would be my validation labels, and oops, these would be my validation training examples, so the four features. So yeah, uh, one, one issue that you already notice here is that both of them are zero, right? And if we continue, what would happen is, so these would be the first training fold, uh, validation fold, these would be the second validation fold, these would be the third, fourth, and fifth. And you can see uh, in almost all of them, except for this one, we will have this issue where we have two of the same labels here. Or vice versa, the first training fold would be this one. And you can see there's uh, yeah, an imbalance here also for uh, in case of the labels. So usually in practice, it's a good idea to shuffle the data set before we do the k-fold cross-validation. So what we can do is we can actually shuffle right inside this k-fold um, object or class when we initialize the object. So we can set a random state here and then yeah, shuffle. So what you can see here is now um, yeah, that we have a better, better mix. So instead of having 0 and 1, 1, 2, it's uh, based on the shuffled indices, so it's more 
randomized, which is good if you have a sorted data set or a data set that has been sorted by the class tables. It's always a good idea to shuffle the data set before you yeah, use k-fold cross-validation or before you split the data set. So yeah, coming back to this um, thing I explained that the numbers here, these are actually the indices. Um, if we want to have the actual labels, we would have to use these indices to select from the data set. So here are now the training labels with shuffling. So you can see now the labels, yeah, they are as follows. So we can also look at the validation um, indices. So um, valid. So here you can see they are now better mixed, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, instead of, uh, if I don't shuffle, so if I said shuffle false, this would be where we have a case where only one would be mixed, but we have this issue 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so forth. So um, it's actually a good idea to shuffle, so we have more representative training and test sets. So, okay. Okay, so this is just like um, explaining the general behavior of this k-fold iterator. So as we discussed earlier in an uh, earlier lecture, it's usually also a good idea to stratify the splits such that the proportion of labels 0 and 1 is the same in each fold, so we have more consistency. Um, yeah, so uh, we can do that using a related uh, iterator or class. It's called stratified k-folds. Instead of using k-fold, we are now using stratified k-fold, which will stratify the splits. So if I execute that, you will now see compared to here that uh, we have the same proportion as in the original data set, so the zero and ones. And then if we look at the validation indices, the same should be true. So in each case, we have a zero and one here because it's yeah better shuffled here so that it's also stratified. So this was just um, going over the concept how these stratified k-fold objects and the k-fold objects work based on this split method. So it's more like an iterator. Um, but now let's see actually how we use, you would use that in practice. So how we would use that to do an actual cross-validation. So let me zoom a little bit out, otherwise it doesn't fit here. So now we are going to consider a decision tree classifier, the iris data set. And uh, we split the iris data set first using the train test split method. So here that's my iris data loaded to two arrays, X and Y. X is again the features, Y are um, the labels. And then we split it into 85% um, training data and 15% test data. So we do a stratified split here. And then we are initializing a stratified k-fold object and we are using um, k equals 10, like recommended by Ron Kohavi in the paper that we discussed in the previous video. So we're doing 10-fold cross-validation here. And we are using the naive approach or the manual approach. And it's not naive, it's just more like verbose on manual using this split iterator. But now we are, uh, instead of just looking at the indices, we are fitting the decision tree and predicting the performance. So first I just set a placeholder, my k-fold accuracy, I set it to zero. And then I'm iterating over the training and validation indices with this split, this is what we have done before. But now instead of just looking at these indices, we are now um, fitting a decision tree. So in each round, uh, we will fit a new decision tree. So we initialize the decision tree here. Actually, you could, um, you could, initialize the decision tree outside and then just call fit on that. Oops. So this would be the same because in uh, scikit-learn the previous decision tree will be wiped out in a way when you call fit it will fit the decision tree from scratch. It will make a brand new decision tree instead of continuing training it. However, yeah, maybe it doesn't hurt to just reinitialize it. So we reinitialize the decision tree and then we fit it on the training fold. So this is the training fold. And then we predict the labels of the validation fold. So here we are predicting on the validation fold. So we get predictions 
and then we compute the accuracy here. So we compute the accuracy on the ith fold. So if this is the first iteration, this would be the performance in the first iteration. So if I just go back to my slides, because why not? Um, da -da -da -da. So we would be currently here computing this performance here. So we are currently in the first fold if we consider the first iteration of the for loop. And then we are just adding up all these performances. So here the sum, so we are summing over these performances when we uh, perform this step. And then we, we are done when we summed up all these performances, we uh, divide by the number of iterations, which gives us the average k-fold cross-validation performance. So that's this uh, part is basically computing here this part. And then, um, because we have now evaluated the model, but maybe in practice we want to have a single model for an application, what we then do is we fit a new decision tree to all the de training data. So this would be then um, this step B here. And then uh, we predict, after fitting, we predict the labels of the test set and then compute the test set accuracy. So this would be then, um, yeah, uh, evaluating the model here. Okay, so let's do that. So what we get is um, the k-fold cross-validation accuracy is 95% and 95.3 um, and the test set accuracy is uh, 95.6 or 0.7. So in that way, they are very close to each other. Um, that's also what we would expect because k-fold cross-validation, 10-fold cross-validation is not um, that much negatively biased. So if we go back one more time to our lecture notes here, or lecture slides, this uh, would correspond to this scenario here where um, let's say the gray one is the true performance and k uh, for cross validation is only slightly negatively biased. However, we also have to say the test set accuracy here is not really like the true accuracy here because it's uh, based on a very small data set, so it may not be super reliable anyways. Okay, um, so this was the manual way using k-fold cross-validation in scikit-learn. There is a more convenient way. It's based on this cross-wall score function. So this one is just a, yeah, a wrapper around um, k-fold or stratified k-fold. If you provide a regression object here, an, a regression model, then it will uh, use regular k-fold. If you provide a classifier here, what will be used here would be stratified k-fold. And um, I will show you later that we can manually actually provide stratified k-fold like here. But um, you can also just type an integer here. So if you type 10 here, and this is a classifier, then this would be stratified k-fold with um, the n splits or k equals 10. So you can just set an integer here. N jobs is a parameter for setting the number of processes because you can carry out k-fold cross-validation in parallel if your computer has multiple computing cores. So um, if I go back to my lecture notes here, or lecture slides, so um, if you look at five-fold cross-validation, all these performances are computed independently of each other, right? So you don't have to wait until round one is computed before you compute round two and so forth. You can do all five rounds at the same time. If you have five processors in your computer, the first processor can compute this one, the second one, this one, and so forth. And with n jobs, you can tell uh, scikit-learn how many processors you want to use in parallel. You can use like a number like three, then it would use uh, three processors. But if you set minus one, then it will use all your processors on your computer. However, note on some uh, Windows computers, I don't know why, multiprocessing is a problem in Python. So if you have problems with running that code, uh, you may have to set it to one or maybe a zero, I'm not sure. So you um, will just set it to none. Let, let us just maybe double check what the, what the options are. Um, I'm not sure if njobs1 spawns up a, new, a second subprocess, if it's like two subprocesses or just one. So let us just double check. So if you have, oops. No, that's not, of course, not working. What I meant was this one. So let's see. 
and jobs. Uh, yeah, I would set it to none. So uh, none means one unless, okay. So you can set it to either one or none. Um, either way would work. So if you have problems with the following code, for some reason, if it gets stuck, I would set this to none on my computer. It works though, so I'm making use of my multiple processors. And yeah, this one will do the same thing as this one here above. Okay, so I get 96%, which is a little bit different from this one. So what happened here? So this has something to do with the fact um, the random seed here in crossbar score. So crossbar score does not have a random seed. So let's consider changing the random seed of stratified KFOD. And because MNIST is a small data set, you will see every time I do that, the results will be a little bit different now. I also get 96. So IRIS is a small data set, so there are some random fluctuations also. So here in Crossbar Score, I actually can't set the random seed. So um, however, what we can do if we want to set a random seed, for example, if you want to make a study and you want to do repeated uh, k-fold holdout. So if you want to do the k-fold cross-validation multiple times, 100 times, and then compute the average of the average performances. So what I mean is you repeat this whole thing 100 times with different, um, different random seeds, and then you average over these performances here. So you have 100, this performance 100 times. If you use this one, you can't do it because there's no random seed, so each run would be the same, identical. However, if you want to do that, if you want to do repeated k-fold cross-validation, you can actually set um, this to an object here, a stratified k-fold or a k-fold object manually, and then here you can um, inside specify a random seed. So here I can actually specify my random seed. So this one, you can see it gives me exactly the same performance as this one because I'm using the exact same random seed and this one is exactly the same procedure as doing this one except this one is like I would recommend it in practice it's a little bit better because it allows you to choose the end jobs which is kind of nice here um, you would have to manually use sub processes for example the job lib library to implement multiprocessing but the concept is exactly the same Okay, so this was uh, using the crossbar score. This is how you can do uh, k-fold cross-validation in scikit-learn for model evaluation. Uh, later videos, we will also take a look at how we can use it for model tuning and model selection. Um, but yeah, just to wrap up this video, some last words about the bootstrap. Yeah, recall the bootstrap from two lectures ago. Um, here, so here's, uh, it's actually one lecture ago only, right? It was last week. So here, um, I implemented an iterator that is similar to how k-fold works, so or stratified k-fold. So what I did is, if you recall, I implemented this bootstrap out of back um, object in ML extent, and it works similar to k-fold or stratified k-fold. You can set the number of splits, you can set a random seed, and then you can iterate over these. So these will give you the indices where this will be your bootstrap sample and these will be your out of bag samples. So now um, you can also use that in the K, uh, you can use that in the crossbar score similar to how we used this stratified K fold. We can also use the bootstrap here if you like. So you can set it to a reasonable number for bootstrapping. I would use at least 200 iterations and then you can set the random seed. Um, yeah, so you can also compute the accuracy based on bootstrapping. And recall from the lectures, um, the out of bag bootstrap is slightly pessimistically biased. So and then uh, analogous to the KFOD uh, crosswall score function, you uh, I also implemented the bootstrap point six three two score where you can compute the uh, bootstrap performance here um, using this. Uh, score function here and you can do the same thing with a 0.632 so this one oops yeah this one and then the plus method if you like so as alternatives okay so yeah this is it then so actually this one is the regular sorry this is if you don't choose an option the regular uh, 
default method would be the 0.632, like the function's name. If you choose the plus, it will be the plus method. And to do the out of back, you have to specify out of back. So this is the same as um, this one here. So the bootstrap out of back here. So you have a random seed of 99. That's probably why the results are different. Oh, yeah, also have a 99. So yeah, you get exactly now 94.73. 4.73. Okay, this was just an optional bootstrap thing, and um, this will also return the bootstrap scores. So um, if I go maybe to the bottom one, so here, this will also return the bootstrap scores. So you can then also use your numpy percentile method to compute the confidence intervals for that one. So actually using bootstrap is not a bad idea. Uh, if you just care about model evaluation, uh, performance. I actually would use this one over k-fold cross-validation because you can then also get nice confidence intervals like we discussed last lecture. But yeah, the point here was just more about explaining to you how k-fold cross-validation works in scikit-learn. And the real useful part about k-fold cross-validation is not the model evaluation, it's really the model selection that we will talk about in the next video.